Some people say they aren't racist, but they're definitely not anti-racist. And that's the problem. That's the problem we have. There's not really in between. You're either racist or you're not. But the facade is that we are seen as equals. I grew up in rural North Carolina, so I've seen the Klan actually march. I feel like we're not doing as much talking as we should be. For me, I just tell myself, be the first step. Talking about race, a conversation with five black men. Once again, Ken Lemon. Welcome back. This is a conversation that is needed but not very common. An honest, no holds barred discussion about what it's like to be a black man. Five men sat down with us. And now, we talk about the system. We've been working through these facades that things have gotten better. And Their concern about the nation was segregated. really revealed when I asked about how far black people have progressed and if they thought things would be better in 15 years. You think about common humanity, um, I think it's very dangerous. I think the next three weeks can be very dangerous. Our interview USA! USA! took place before the mob broke into the Capitol building. We now know that group included extremists and white supremacists. These men believe people with intentional hate for black people have always been allowed too much opportunity. I'm just talking about even just you seeing the bigger tree and all of that stuff, like it's on a rise. Like people have no um, discretion about it now as far as how they really feel about what's going on. They, they're very empowered right now. And that's scary just because of, you know, like I said, I, I grew up in rural North Carolina, so I've seen the Klan actually march. I mean, let's talk, we talk about in Salisbury, what, two, three years ago, you had the Klan march down Main Street. So, I mean, like. They were in Concord three weeks ago. Right, so like, I mean, that's, we're not like, so imagine they're empowered and feel like they can do whatever. Um, it's terrifying. But, but you know, I never really had this fantasy world where things were just going to be so wonderful. Um, because I mean, when I looked at the history, that even as we progressed, there was always this lag in the eyes of, uh, of the general population of, of whites and Caucasians and so forth. He believes that there are political, economic, judicial, and other systems in place to make sure that lag is always there for black men. Something he just said, I thought about a meme that I saw on social media. It says that the system is not broken, it was built this way. Right. People still have that hatred in their heart. We just need to talk, let them know, like, why do you feel that way about me? Why do you feel like I'm finna rob your car or break into it? Why do you feel that way? And just, just communicate. I think the, the, the white supremacists feel very comfortable. Harris even said he had to have difficult conversations with his son, the kind you'd expect to hear in the 1960s. I'm talking to my 15-year-old son about the fact that you need to be very careful because there are people that don't value your life, son. These men don't think the problem is with those who hate them. Their real fear is that there are not enough people who love them willing to stand up to the hate, too. People lack love. People lack empathy. And I think the problem that I've realized is People just aren't anti-racist. You know, some people say they aren't racist, but they're definitely not anti-racist. And that's the problem. That's the problem we have. It's, you know, it's, you see a group of people being treated unfairly, and until everyone says that that's not right, we've got to do something about that, we're gonna be here 100 years from now. When I have conversations with my white colleagues or you know, even my white classmates, I'm like, yo, you got to have these conversations with people that I don't have access to. That's when the real change is gonna happen. It's, it's, it's cool for you, me and you, to have this dialogue. Oh, you cool with Sean and this, that, and the third. All right, cool, yeah. But what are you gonna do after I'm outside of your presence? What are you gonna do to step up for me when your family members are saying you know, derogatory stuff about somebody that looks like me? What are you going to do? And I think that's where we had to have that change. Especially with the way that, you know, technology has advanced and like everybody has the access to all this information, to all these statistics, to all these videos, to see it personally happening. And, you know, everyone, you know, we're all so connected that like, you know, anyone can hear these stories. Anyone can come up and have this conversation with me, any of my friends, and yet they can still carry these mindsets about it. So I think that's why there's this level of like, I'm not going to say no hope, but just, you know, may, maybe a, 
a distrust in how quickly things will progress. Kyle hopes the recent racial reckoning after the killing of George Floyd and the public push for racial equality has emboldened those fighting for change too. And I think for a lot of people, it's hard to get away from it. You know, that's making a lot of people really uncomfortable is the fact that they can't avoid it. It's like, oh, we just want our sports. We just want our entertainment. We just want our art. Why does it have to be so divisive? I'm like, no, it's, it's, it's not divisive if you take the time to understand what it truly is, right? And so I think it's gonna come to a place where it's like, you know, like I said, everyone's gonna get exposed for what they are. Everything comes to light eventually. And you're gonna have to come to a place where you're gonna have to make a decision where you stand with it. There's not gonna be this as much hiding as there was before, because I think systems are getting, you know, these systems that we talk about are slowly getting broken down to where we can see them. And it's like, all right, so there's not really in between, you know, because if you're either racist or you're not. I think there's enough emphasis that's been placed on the injustices done to the black man that there must be some repentance. And I always say until white men get angry enough to do something, we won't see a change. At this point, I'm ready to die. The youngest member of this group found purpose from a stranger and in the midst of chaos. That's not something that just happens overnight. A turning point in a moment of turmoil. That's next.